Classic Rock. Classic Rock. Classic Rock. Classic Rock. Rock, classic rock. Mr. Jones. Hey, how you doing? Great, man. So I'm just going to jump right in, man. I'm a lifelong foreigner fan, so I could ask you a million questions. So I'm going to jump in and get as many in as I can until you tell me to shut up. Okay. <laughs> now, before I even talk about the tour, the new album, all the good things and exciting things going on, I got to ask you, as a foreigner fan, someone told me way, way back, you used to quite frequently open for the Rolling Stones. Is that a legend or is it true? Well, no, it's true. It was, um, I guess I was about 15 at the time, and uh, they were they were pretty well known, but they were, you know, not obviously as huge as they became, but um, they were playing shows around London, and uh, I guess I opened up about two or three times with my little amateur band. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite something, you know, it really was. It was a magical time, all that stuff, you know, with, and then with the uh, Beatles and everything. So I feel lucky to have come up at that time and, uh, you know, in the evolution of things. I actually told my buddy i thought he was full of crap man I'll, i'm gonna have to eat my words now <laughs> oh you're gonna have to do that <laughs> sorry <laughs> what what a learning experience for a 15 year old man <laughs> yeah pretty much was it was pretty uh, daunting actually but uh funnily enough you know i mean my musical taste was you know a lot i, I guess there's a lot of uh, kids at that time in england a lot of it was about um, stuff we were hearing from the states you know like chuck berry and Oh, yeah. Uh, Buddy Holly and people like that, you know, Eddie Cochran, people that, uh, you know, although they'd had hit singles and stuff in America, they somehow, uh, the English musicians really kind of, you know, took them much more seriously than that, and they became influence in England. You know? Well, you guys actually brought the, I mean, that's a whole, we're talking legendary stuff, the British invasion there. I mean, my God, you you took it and brought it, made it modern and brought it back home to us. Um, yeah, that's really what happened. Uh, what was, um, unfortunately in those days, I believe they called it race music. That's true. Was, um, you know, what was the foundation of English, uh, of the English rock, uh, you know, the British invasion, if you want to put that in there. <laughs> but that was then. And now before I get to now, I've had a lot of discussions with people in the business. We talk about foreigner people at foreigner concerts, you know, because you played with Spooky Tooth with Gary Wright before right, Foreigner. Yeah. And pe I've had so many people go, man, I just can't hear that. How could that's such a different sounding band? And I've that's always been a point of contention, and I'm hoping to see if you agree with me. I think that band had a lot of funky soulness in it, and I think yeah. Foreigner does too. Oh yeah, it definitely was a um, it was an opportunity for me to kind of get my my direction together. I had that it was a you know it had a lot of effect on me that period playing with uh, Gary and uh, there was the other vocalist Mike Harrison it was kind of a bit like the Righteous Brothers in a way and um, that is kind of uh, the direction I guess that um, you know it was that I was in, I had roots in soul music, I had roots in, in rockabilly music, you know, and straight head rock, and I kind of fused them, I suppose, subconsciously, that all sort of fused together uh, and became um, the, the foundation of the direction for Farnham. And now that direction's still going, I mean, here in 2010, you guys have just started what's probably like the trifecta for classic rock fans. Of course, you're touring with Sticks in Kansas. Yep. Yeah. Now, did this, was this just, uh, I mean, did this come up and you just jumped on board or, you know, how did this thing come together? This is a great package. I can't even count all the hits on two hands, man. Yeah, well, it, actually it is. We've, we've just done a couple of shows um, and uh, to start the tour off and it's been, um, you know, we've played with Sticks before. They, uh, they're a great uh, live band. They have a great, you know, catalog of songs, as do Kansas, you know. And um, then you added ours in, in there, and you've got, like, uh, I mean, it's an amazing body of work, you know, between the three bands. And uh, I think people really, you know, are attracted by that. And they pretty much know every song that's going to be played that night, even if they're only fan of one band, you know. they'll I think, uh, you know, it crosses over. Uh, very nicely between the three bands and um, you know it's an exciting show uh, we've uh, as I say we've toured with Sticks before and uh, obviously with Kansas at times and um, I think there's a lot of quality in these three bands you know from the musicianship point of view also uh, from the songwriting point of view and you know they're they're all three really good uh, live bands so it's a pretty exciting tour yeah I grew up in the same town as uh, Rich Williams and Phil Lehart of Kansas so any pranks that could be done in my name Please do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, of course, you're on the road, man. And you're still producing this. I mean, promoting can't can't slow down. But what what a cool package! First off, you guys have a DVD, a greatest hits kind of remix, plus an incredible album of new songs, and it's like twelve bucks. Did you yeah, not, not bad? Eh? Yeah. Did you not want to make any money on this? I mean, how, how could they? How could they do that? I know. It's um, <laughs> well, you know, we we wanted to get the maximum exposure for the album, and um, you know, really make people aware that we we're not just um, you know doing the same old thing day in and day out, but that we are actually creating stuff and that we're still thinking that way and we're still actively writing and uh well actually in my case i've kind of rediscovered it you know and uh and, and that's why I decided to embark on an album about 18 months, well, almost two years ago now. You know, I think the band uh, just still has a lot to say musically in as much as the song is concerned. And I think that's always been the strength of the band, has been the, the power in the song. And um, I'm out to, to kind of prove that uh, there's still some of that power left, you know. So. Well, there is. And I would, you know, you hadn't put out an album without Lou singing it for some time. And he had come back and left. I mean, was there a little nervousness you know with the, not that it's bad i know kelly too he's a great singer well yeah i mean i i guess if, if i think back about it it was a bit of um well you know this is a a, a new venture i've got to really I've, i really have to um get this band to some kind of an acceptance level that this really is a you know a, a powerful um, version of foreigner and i suppose it was a bit of a grace period you know um respecting what it, obviously the legacy that i'd had with lou and uh, and turning the page into this new chapter so yeah there was there was you know I've, i i was a little scared i didn't quite know how um i i probably was a bit intimidated uh, subconsciously and uh, um it had been a while since i'd really you know sat down and wrote a whole album's worth of songs so um but once i once you know once i started it was uh, it was i guess like you know riding a horse and uh it started to come back but i must say you know i've got a lot of inspiration from the band and kelly is uh, you know has been in, uh, incredible to work with uh, not only his talent but as a you know as a person he's really dedicated and, and that certainly helps a lot you know and the, and the band the guys are just uh, they're all great players and they're all so enthusiastic and you know for the first time in many many years i'm actually having fun on stage and uh, I think uh, the audiences are picking up on that, and they uh, join in with that, and, and we, we're having some fantastic shows. The package shows that, too. It was very wise of you to put the new songs, not only with the remix, that's like a bonus, but I think the smart thing then was the DVD, because, man, you can really see the fun the band is having, man, and the songs <laughs> sound great. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, we've been having some uh, initial success in uh, Europe, uh, England uh, and Germany especially, and, um, you know, the album is um, selling quite well in America. It's, uh, you know, in this day and age, we've already sold over 100,000 albums. So This day and age, that's huge, man. That's pretty big, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's awesome. Unfortunately, <laughs> that is the, uh, the situation these days, but... Um, so, uh, you know, and we, and we've got a lot of depth on this album. We're, we have a, a new single out right now in pieces, and that's doing very well at radio. So fingers crossed and a lot of hard work. And, uh, you know, we're on our way to um, getting back to... I, I just want to get the band, and I think we're, we're well on our way there, but uh, to get, you know, some of the prestige that we, we may have lost towards the end when things weren't so great between Lou and I, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and the band... I felt sort of sank down a bit towards the end of the 90s, and I, I really just just wanted to, to get um, get get the band back into uh, some uh, you know an area where I think it belongs, um, uh, respected and uh, regain some of the pride that was lost maybe, and uh, um, you know get back where we belong. Rock, classic rock. Revisited.